All right, everybody, on today's episode of Pintail's Garage, we are going to be working again on my Interceptor two, uh, 650. And on today's episode, we're going to be doing an oil change, spark plugs, and a valve adjustment. So let's get to work because this is Pintail's Garage with me. First things first, as always on your bike, we want to put it on the center stand. We're going to take the side cover off so we can take the seat off. That will give us access to the bolts to the tank. And then we'll get the tank removed and then we're going to start on the oil change, remove the spark plugs, and then we'll get ready to doing the valve cover. The valve cover will be the last part of the job, but we want to do everything else before we get to that. So. If this is your first time working on your infield and you want to get to this statue uh, seat, you're going to work on the front cover here. You unlock it, pull it towards you, pull it down, yeah, just like that. You're no longer going to need your cover anymore or your key. Here's the pull plug for your seat. Pull the seat up and towards you. Now we need to do that so we can get access to these two bolts right here for the tank. But that's it for right now on this side. We're now gonna work on getting the oil drained on this guy. So uh, one thing we wanna open the fill side. This is where we actually fill it. Now we open it so we can let it pretty much vent out uh, as it goes in so it allows the oil to just come out a lot quicker for you. So now we're gonna see where your oil filter and drain plug is. So oil filter is right here in the front of the engine and down right below it, you'll see this guy right here. That's your drain plug, all right? So with the center stand up, you can actually put your oil drain pan right underneath it in its perfect position. So you can actually just drop it right into that. Very, very simple oil filter and drain plug right there. So let's get ready to remove that. Now that you get your 13 millimeter wrench here, which is useless in this space, I gotta get a, a ratchet instead. But the good thing is this is a 13 millimeter for the drain. And then this guy you just take off with your hands. All right. Now we much better access like this. Once it's loose enough, you should be able to turn it by hand. And you're doing all your oil. Now this is the second oil change this bike has had. Alright. Now it is a magnetic pickup, so you go through it and you examine the pickup. Uh, these flakes on top were actually from the oil pan that was on there before, but I'm looking at it in general, it's super clean, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, I recommend the crush washer has to be replaced every single time after every oil change on this bike. Never reuse them. They're not really designed to be reused to begin with. So as that's draining, we're now going to remove the oil filter right here as well. Okay, so I don't have a wrench and turning this by hand has been sucky. So, I'm gonna do this the old fashioned way by cramming a screwdriver into it. I'm turning it by hand. messy this way but it works 
Um, I just hate doing it. But whoever put the filter on this did a number. I'm putting it way too tight. These only go on a little bit more than high, like a little tighter than hand tight. This shouldn't be that hard. It should not. Again, I'm the first. This is the first time I'm touching this bike, doing actual service on it. I can tell you already off the bat, they put it on way too tight. This is like the one thing I hate about dealerships. You just don't know the quality of the work and how much. The actual mechanic loves doing his job, you know? There we go. Yeah, that was a that was a bit too much, honestly. A bit way too much, but it's done now as you can see here we got oil dripping down here and some here the drip from here was from the oil filter when I was making the hole so um, personally I do the best best you can to clean up the area prior to installing your um, new filter all you need to do on the new filter is oil the ring don't Try to fill it and put it in there. It's a waste of time. Unfortunately, it's not like a normal car where you fill it and then you screw it in. You're just gonna make more of a mess and you're gonna just dump a bunch of oil on the ground. Just don't do that. It's not worth it. Let that drain for a couple more minutes. And then we're gonna work next on uh, removing the gas tank. Uh, and then we're gonna remove the spark plugs and then the valve cover and then get ready to do uh, some adjustment. Now, as per the Bentley, uh, not Bentley, <laughs> as per the Royal Enfield uh, manual, I uh, recommend doing the, the valve adjustment when the bike is cold. So that's what we're going to be doing. Okay, so now we have the two 10 millimeter bolts right here. Take them up, Let's pick them up, move them out of the way. Now, underneath here, we have a vacuum line, vacuum line, breather, uh, you have the sensor, fuel pump. There's like three things over here, and there's a couple things over here towards the back. My tank is pretty dang full, so I gotta figure out uh, pretty much how to get this. this uh, tank emptied and yanked out all at the same time so <laughs> it's not gonna be that easy unfortunately I'm gonna probably take everything off and before I yank the fuel line out get pop it out and then put my finger in it and then drain it into a container Pretty convenient right here. A jerry can right here, five gallon. I'm probably gonna empty it into. Uh, 
Okay. So as you guys are watching, there's two vent tubes right here. Here's a wire for the fuel pump, and then there's a green wire that sits all the way back here for, I think this is the uh, ascending unit, so the level. And then we have the actual fuel, fuel line that's right here. Now, for this guy to come out, Plug it. Now, there's a bunch of fuel in this thing, so I don't want to unplug it immediately. I want to get the tank ready for pulling out. Um, on these tanks, you will pull, I believe, forward. Yeah. Uh, yep, forward and up. See here. Sucker's hard. And my strong hand's actually not a little longer than my strong hand. It's actually my weak hand. And my weak hand is technically my strong hand, but it's still weak. <laughs> so, I don't know how much of a mess I'm going to make. We will see. Push down. Oh, it's a double pitch. Okay. Got a little bit of fuel coming out. Oh, man, come on. So I got my finger on it right now. I don't have to drain it. <laughs> so if you hold the, the tank, hold the tank at an angle forward like this, uh, I guess the way that it drains fuel because of the fuel pump, there's not much fuel coming out of it, which is great because now I have full access to everything here. Um, and pretty much that's it. Hey babe. Uh, so now, gas tank removed we now have much much better like visual on what's next so the next step here is that we have to break loose this bracket right here on top one two three okay that just has to break be broken loose it doesn't need to be removed uh, you break it loose uh, that way some of the stuff down here that's underneath the valve cover uh, gives a little bit more um, space. The valve cover comes out through the left side of the bike. There's no way you can get it out through the right because of the throttle cables. Um, but now that we have that, we're pretty much now, we're, we got much more progress, put, put it that way, uh, in a much better way um, than I thought. <laughs> 
which I'm pretty excited for. So these three, which are held together with an Allen wrench, with those three, these three bolts are removed. You're gonna to wanna to do the next, uh, loosen that up. We're gonna remove the spark plugs, and then we're gonna remove the valve. Okay, so we're now here. So I'm removing this bracket. Now this bracket, we're not gonna remove completely. Remember, we're just unbolting it. using the three millimeter Allen. allowing the, the top of this to get loose okay now we're not trying to remove it we're just adding the extra play that we need underneath even though it's very minimal it makes a drastic difference with your space that you need okay so now that's removed, now we can work on spark plugs. Spark plugs, so you just yank right out, yank that one out. This one's a little, little bit of a tedious one. This one's being difficult. We got both plugs on this side and that side. Uh, cables removed. Now we're gonna work on removing the actual spark plug and going from there. These use a standard, uh, what is this? 5.8 socket, uh, standard 5.8 spark plug socket to remove them, nothing special. Now the plugs are removed. Now we're gonna need an eight millimeter socket to get the valve cover off. All right, working on the valve cover now. And they're gonna have to work on the crank cover, which is down below. Those are super important because that's how we're going to rotate the engine when we get to that point so we start doing valve adjustments. Heads up everyone, the valve cover on this thing is the worst in the world, especially because the gaskets are horrible. From everything I read, it's just everybody hates these things with a passion. So I've never done it, but we'll see how much uh, hatred I'll have after the fact. So let's make our way down. 
Nice, cool, close view right there. guys full access to your valves your head your cam right here in the middle um, highly highly considering getting a cam for the uh, hunter 350 maybe for this guy too I don't know be cool to do one all right set this guy aside see there's eight valves in total two per side looks really really cool I get a photo shot right here um, now at this point at your and your on your job you want to start cleaning up a lot of this material Try not to um, damage anything. <laughs> uh, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, and I believe this is an eight millimeter or a ten. Confirm. Yeah, it's a ten. So you need a flathead screwdriver and a ten on the next part of this job. So next cover it's held by a 14 millimeter so get this guy out now this gives you access to the crank to crank the engine now you'll see here it's got a seal and everything so oil goes through here so be careful guys don't damage this don't drop it or anything like that okay Set aside. There's a six-sided socket in here. We're gonna find out what size it is. It looks like a 19 or something.
put a 20 and a 21 and a 19. None of those work. Actually smaller, so we'll see. And seventeen is the final number. All right, guys. Now you have to turn the engine counterclockwise. Okay, you cannot go any other way than counter. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this up so you guys get a really close view of what I'm saying um, to understand how timing uh, works on this and then how the marker, the timing markers are on here or the valve adjustment marker is on here. Uh, there's a little notch that goes across and it matches to the, pretty much the casting across the, pretty much the can cap or the rocker arm cover. Uh, there's a line that goes across. That line that cuts across has to be parallel with that line, and that'll open up the valves or get you pretty much to TDC on one side. You're gonna have to rotate it again to get the TDC on the other side, and that'll be done for one side, and then you do the other side, but using the markers that are on the other side of the engine. You do not do one side and then do the other. You do one, two, and then go to the side, three and four. Got it? I know, but we recommend you do it this way, um, just for safety's sake. And then there's a little, and, uh, yeah, we're loose here, so we know that we're on, we're, we're set. So I'm gonna confirm. Let me go get the, my uh, my feeler gauges, and then we'll go forward on that. All right, guys. So for this, on the intake side, you need. 0.003 or in millimeters 0 0.076 on the exhaust side 0 0.007 or in millimeters 0.178 all right since the feeler gauge is needed right now for intake because we're working on the left side um sorry the left side over here this is um uh, actually hold on this is intake So right now we have it on left, which is on, on the exhaust side. And how do you know this is the exhaust? Because the exhaust is on this side, intake is on this side. Right now I have it set to left, so we're gonna be doing the exhaust valves right now. Mom by the head, and we're gonna measure. Okay, see, here's the space. Now right now, that's actually pretty nice and snug. It's a little loosey-goosey, but we'll confirm it right now. Okay, so exhaust is very nice. This one can go a little tighter, but I think I can leave it alone for now. But it's up to you. If you feel like you need to adjust them, they need to snag a little bit. So they have a little bit of free play. So let, I'll show you what I mean. So you'll see here that has a little bit of play, but 
it should be able to you should be able to put it in slide it out with a little bit of effort if you have to put too much effort into it to yank it out it's too tight so let me try the intake side really first to confirm before I start just adjusting valves just for no reason so that's the left now we're gonna do the right and remember always rotating the engine counterclockwise Up. Intake is 0 0.003 and then, or three zero, yeah, and then, or 0 0.076 in millimeters. So that guy is good. I have a little snag at the end of it, but that fits really well. That one, hmm. Try it again. No, it's really it's so it's, it's so thin. It gives you kind of like a like a false sense of uh, loose or not, but that feels really good. I'm pretty happy on that. So on the left side of the bike, technically we're good. There's no reason to adjust them, but I'm gonna show you how to adjust them anyways, just for safekeeping. So let's assume this one needs to be adjusted, okay? We don't like it because it's not snagging, it's really loose. So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench, break it loose, okay? You need a flathead screwdriver. that it's like super loosey-goosey I can take it out put it in too easy so what you want to do check your screwdriver here you want to turn it that's like really tight I can't move it right there yep. I'm liking that right there. Okay. So, with your screwdriver here, you're gonna hold it in place so it doesn't rotate on you. Give it a good tug. So now that's really loose, so that's not good. Well, it takes a couple tries for you to get it right. It's not going to be perfect every single time. Still a little loose. And this is where trial and error kicks in. Snag on it. Again, you want it to drag a little bit, but you don't want it to, to cause any like crazy friction here. That feels good. Hmm, this could go down a bit more. I'll try it one more time. And then it should be good. And 
And that's it. That, everybody, is how you pretty much adjust your valves on the left side of the bike. We're going to go to the right side now and show you the same process. <laughs> okay. So now we're on, on the uh, right side of the motor. So, like I was showing you earlier on that side, when you have it on the L or the left side, which is the um, technically the exhaust side, I don't know why it, that's how it wants it to see the orientation, but pretty much once you set it to L, you can do the exhaust side over here as well. Again, we're going to measure it 0 0.007 or 0 0.178 in millimeters. And then we got a good drag on that one. That one. A little on the snuggy snug side. I think that one needs to. Probably the way I'm holding it. Yeah, that's not bad. So, on the exhaust side, we're good. We're gonna rotate the engine again, and we're gonna check the uh, the right side, um, which is the intake side on this side. to uh, check the intake side at 0 0.003 or 0 0.076 in millimeters. A drag. Well, it's got a little drag, but no major gap. That one's a little too loose. This one's got a good drag on it. This one. So we're going to fix this intake valve um, really quick. This one we have to fit in here, like that. Gotta keep repeating this process because these are these dogs are a lot more a lot less forgiving.
Bye. Now that we got all the valves adjusted, I'm going to actually, actually adjust the intake one here. The exhaust one. One exhaust, one intake had to be adjusted, but not bad. Next step is to get the, the bloody valve cover installed. Uh, Alright, let's do it. And the reason why it's such a pain is because this, this piece right here, the ABS unit, and then there's like, there's just no space. There's just absolutely no space. I mean, legitimately, if they would have moved the frame like a quarter inch higher, it would have been perfect. All right. And now your biggest headache out of everything in this entire job is this valve cover gasket. It sucks. I can already tell you right after that. Royal Enfield should have put the indentation on the head and not on the valve cover. Um, that would have just solved everybody's headache. Um, so Royal Enfield, if you watch this video, the next engine you guys develop, put the little uh, groove right here in the head so the valve co cover gasket stays stationary so we can just slide the, ga head, the valve cover on and I don't spend, you know, Maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes fiddling with the gas to make it work. Just a heads up. All right, we're back. So, I'm going to go have some dinner. So, next step is when you put the valve cover gasket on, you want to remove the RTV that's in there from the old one. It's only on the little moon that's on the, on the other side. Remove it, clean it all off. Put a new valve cover gasket, and then what you're gonna do is put it in there, slide everything back in like I removed it. When you put it back in though, you're gonna have to install the gasket onto the valve cover first before you start putting your, uh, your bolts back on. Um, because if not, it's not gonna work. I'm just, I'm just telling you that right now. It's not gonna work at all if you don't do that. And pretty much hand tighten all the way down. All fours. Now, I officially dislike the fact that you have to pull this up and then scratch the crap out of your valve cover just to get it removed and installed. And I'm telling you guys this right now, it's gonna scratch pretty bad. So, that already bugs me. Okay, so it's all hand tightened now. Um, now's a good time to put back this guy. The ABS module. You get your three bolts that go here. Don't forget your two bolts that are over here. For the gas tank. I put some black RTV uh, on the little half moon seal that's in there. We got new spark plugs to install as well. Up where your 
fuel line plugs into here. Uh, when, you get, when the bike actually turns on, you're gonna give it a couple extra cranks because you're gonna have to um, add some more fuel into the line since I didn't have any fuel for a little while. Spark plugs next, a bracket, and a gas tank, and then we can fire it up. Now, these are your plugs. Um, Bosch R6 is the pretty much spark plug model number. Uh, you'll notice, oh wait, here, let me show you the wear. 3,000 miles. Uh, it's actually a good color if you can see that not too shabby it's got a nice light brown not too light brown but it's really nice on this and I'll be right back okay for your spark plug guys uh, in metric it's 0.7 to 0.8 millimeters in gap okay in uh, us American guys it's 0.02 to 0.03 so if you as long as you're within that range in Americans we're good so we're gonna double check this guy 0.2 hitting 03 so we can mash this down a little bit and gap it these are copper by the way we found that out Okay, we need that one. So this guy's ready to go. Uh, personally, get some copper anises. That way, you prevent these from just seizing up in there. Super easy. Just a little bit. Got one. My next one. Remember, these are Bosch R6 spark plugs. Now, I'm hitting my 3,000 mile mark. This is why I'm doing the big service on this because. Uh, when breaking in the motor, you know, not everything goes as planned. Not everything is perfect on a brand new motor. So, so some, some things on the bike will wear down a little bit and wear things a little quickly. quickly. You know, you're not hurting anybody by doing all this service on it. You're only doing yourself a benefit. Yeah, you're spending some money, but you know what? At the end of the day, to me personally, is money well spent. Some people think it's just dumb. Uh, I mean, I do things 
this way always. And you know what? My for some reason my cars last longer than most other people's cars. You know? They own the same damn car and they're already having problems within like a year that they bought the damn thing. Um, to me it's just a form of preventative maintenance to others. It's just a waste of money. So by all means, you guys be the judge of it. Not my problem, but these are gap now. They're within specifications. I'm gonna go get some uh, copper anises on this. Now I've had this copper anises for years years because you know you don't use you don't use spark plugs as often hey just a little bit on there there not very much copper and so you just slap it on there and then tighten the, uh, the nut or the plug all right plugs are in now the hard part about this that you're gonna have is pushing this guy down because these have to go in snug because you don't want any water building up inside of here okay so they go in you have to hear it click You don't hear it click, it's not all the way down. And then you're gonna have a misfire because you're gonna have one plug that's not plugged in. That's it. And that's done. This guy up. These are the pretty much gas tank holders, the bolts. Set them aside over here. Remember, you got your sending unit right here. There you, go. you got your sending unit, which you want to plug in first. Then you want to do probably this guy, which is the fuel pump, and then the two. Actually, what I would do first is the fuel line and the sending unit. Then I would probably do the fuel pump and then the, va uh, the venting tubes right here. Uh, to make life a little bit better, from what I can see here, I'll probably move and clean up the zip ties a little bit. Cut those. I got my heated grips right here. I'm gonna probably zip them down so get the zip tie.
all this now. Fuel line check. All right. Fuel pump. Check. This part you're gonna have is the two breather lines. They're like right there. They really don't give you much uh, to work with in the sense of space. So I'm gonna try to do it, but without seeing it, it's right here.
Okay, got one. guy with oil so you have your field line and then you got your visual line down here as well um, pretty much there's a min a mid and a high uh, show you guys you see down here this is your low this is your high so obviously you want to fill if you want if, if your oil is getting down here that means there's something wrong, but this is the fill line pretty much right there. So, since this is a flat tappet valve system, you want to add a little bit of zinc. Um, I use uh, I use a lot of uh, Z uh, Luca Zinc products. If you're not going to be buying uh, Royal Enfield oil directly, this is the best option you have because Royal Enfield oil is very expensive. Okay, as long as it meets this uh, JSO MA2 uh, APAI, it meets this pretty much criteria, you're good. I'm using 1040, they recommend 1050. 1050 is actually pretty hard to find, um, but you're fine. Again, add a little bit of zinc to this. I'm gonna usually add about a quarter bottle of this right here. It's a good mixture. Uh, zinc is just really good for old school style engines, especially like this engine that uses very heavy uh, tappets and a wet clutch. So it's just to add more zinc to your motor. Oil. That's all it is. Now, what I ended up doing is making a little boat out of a water bottle. Additive. 
Dante three fourths. Oh no. Now if you let this drain for a long time, let's say three, three point two quarts, more than enough. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wait till it fills up, right? And then once you have it at the level that you want it at, fire the bike up, and then um, get it to temp, and then just add a little bit more oil because the oil filter is gonna use some use up some of your oil as well. So you hold a bunch of oil in there. So you're putting a dry oil filter in your system. This works really well. Pretty much zero mess right now. You'll probably have some because you have to move it out of the way. to mention uh, that cover that's on the side that for you to crank the engine put that on <laughs> before you do anything else okay so our oil officially has hit the little marker on the second dash the upper one stating that it's full so what I'm gonna do is I already got my drain plug tightened up my oil filter tightened up I added two quarts almost three quarts um, but I did add a decent amount of the of the, um, of the Lucas zinc oil so I'm gonna turn the bike on let it get up to you know, a little warm once the bike is warm turn it off and then see where we're at on oil after that Take a few tries to fire it up because the fuel line has been empty for a little bit. Nice and hot, so 
circulate through the, uh, the oil cooler. That way we have a better idea how much oil we actually have. We want it to settle. Just a little uh, less than half a quart that we need. Again, this happens mainly because you have to fill up all the crevices where the oil was sitting. So this is kind of normal. Again, you just fill up an oil filter with oil. We filled up an oil cooler with oil. So um, this is what we do. Again, I didn't use all my oil that I needed. Double check, okay, which are oil levels here, because you want to make sure, you know, you're, you're doing all your service. So, you have to buy four quarts. Well, obviously, you're not going to be using four, but you're going to keep this, the fourth one for your next oil change. For the next one, you're going to be doing three quarts and whatever's left over. that much oil. But everything else is gonna get wet, so Right now it's 
currently settling right below the top line. You're at the point right now where you want to make the decision to add more or just leave it there. Personally, I'm probably just going to add a bit more and I'm going to leave it alone. This guy for later. a little bit so I'm pretty happy that it stopped clicking because the valves were ticking a little bit louder now the tick is almost gone that adjustment did it I was on the money for that adjustment sounds so good done and that everybody is how you do an oil change spark plugs uh, what is it a gas tank removal valve cover removal valve job all in one video thank you guys for watching this you guys have been an awesome audience phenomenal as always smash that like and subscribe button here at Pinchy Alice Garage because we got more content coming. I actually gonna give you guys a big runaround on the new Hunter 350 from Oral Infield. I actually picked one up. So we're gonna do a bunch of cool stuff. We're gonna actually turn this bike into a scrambler. Um, we're gonna kind of copy the uh, Diablo scrambler, scrambler that's online if you Google just Royal Infield um, Hunter 350 scrambler. I'm gonna copy that uh, scrambler setup, but I'm gonna give it my own Pinchy Owl flair. Um, I'm probably gonna do some sugar skulls on here and do some research on handlebars. I'm gonna relocate these odometer speedometer down below. I'm gonna do like uh, the side mount license plate. I don't know, I'm gonna, I got a bunch of cool ideas to do for this bike. This is not a fast bike, but it is a really fun bike definitely worth the replacement of the Honda ADV 150 that I had. Same price point by the way guys, actually it's cheaper. The Honda ADV is $42.99, this is $4,000. Brand new, obviously don't forget licensing, registration, and taxes, but it's a $4,000 bike and it does 70 miles an hour with no issues. Um, but we're not looking for speed, we're looking for fun, we're looking for unique, and that's what's gonna happen to this bike when we guys start building this one. But thank you all for watching this video and you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out and thanks for watching Pinchiao's Garage.